Hello everyone, you're welcome to Jam Vibes. Ever since the elections were definitely concluded upon, everybody wanted Ramaphosa to finally break his silence and reveal what next, because everybody knew that a coalition is definitely in the talks. Right now, Ramaphosa has actually hit the nation with a very shocking speech, whereby he declares the need for a government of national unity. I'm here to give you all every single thing that Ramaphosa spewed out in that speech. And before I do so, kindly do well to follow Jam Vibes, please. Like this video, drop a comment, and above all, share this video with all of your friends and loved ones. Just days after the African National Congress, popularly abbreviated as the ANC, experienced significant setbacks at the polls, Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa announced on Thursday his intention to form a government that encompasses a diverse array of political parties, including those with drastically different viewpoints. Since the end of the apartheid, South Africa has been governed by the ANC. However, the country has been in a state of uncertainty since the pivotal election of May 29th, when voters penalized the ruling party for failing to tackle critical issues such as souring unemployment, frequent power outages, and high crime rates. In the coming days, the now weakened ANC will engage in negotiations with several opposition parties to create a coalition government. This effort aims to prevent a hung parliament where no single party or coalition has a majority and to bring stability to South Africa's governance. We are inviting political parties to form a government of national unity as the best way to move our country forward, Ramaphosa declared at a late night news conference on Thursday. This moment calls for the broadest unity of the people of South Africa. Although the ANC remains the largest party, having secured 40% of the vote in the recent national election, it now holds 159 seats in the 400-seat National Assembly, falling 42 seats short of a majority. The National Assembly is highly responsible for electing the president, in the ANC's proposal for a government of national unity, various parties will be represented, with cabinet ministers chosen from multiple factions. 18 parties won at least one seat in the recent election. Such a government will likely allow Ramaphosa to maintain his presidency, but might require appointing an opposition lawmaker to the role of deputy president. South Africa previously operated under a government of national unity during Nelson Mandela's first administration before a new constitution was established to replace the apartheid era one. This historical predecedent might help South Africa navigate the current political transition, though some doubt its viability. Political analyst Richard Corland expressed skepticism noting that the diverse policy goals of the involved parties could render the government completely unworkable and hinder the implementation of a cohesive action plan. Some political parties have also voiced strong reservations about collaborating with their counterparts across the political spectrum. Leaders of the Democratic Alliance, popularly abbreviated as the DA, the largest opposition party with 21%, of the vote have labelled the prospect of working with Jacob Zuma's Umkonto Resizwe's party, popularly abbreviated as AMKP, and Julius Malema's Economic Freedom Fighters, that is the EFF, as a doomsday coalition. Both MK and EFF advocate for radical economic reforms that diverge significantly from the ANC's moderately progressive economic policies and the DA's free market approach. The EFF aims to amend the constitution to facilitate land redistribution and nationalize the central bank 
while MK seeks to overhaul South Africa's legal system and secure a pardon for Zuma, enabling him to return to parliament. Zuma, who led the ANC before being ousted six years ago amid corruption allegations, initially ignored the ANC's overtures. However, MK has now agreed to a meeting to hear the views presented with an open mind, provided the focus remains on prioritizing the South African majority and blacks in particular. The ANC's negotiation team is scheduled to meet with the DA on Saturday. Until now, the discussions between the two parties have been described as very tentative and explanatory by Tony Leon, a former DA leader and current member of their negotiation team. Leon emphasized the importance of approaching the negotiations with an open mind, stating, and I quote, This is not the time for posturing and point scoring, but to put the country on the right path. His comment underscores the urgent need for political cooperation to address South Africa's challenges and ensure effective governance. Without necessarily judging, I want you all to give me your honest opinions in the comment section. I'm going to be reading you all and answering to each and every one of your comments. I love you from the bottom of my heart and see you all in our subsequent upload.